In this video, we're going to be dealing with um, what are called inelastic collisions, um, and in particular, perfectly inelastic collisions. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about the perfect in a second, but all, all collisions uh, on some level are inelastic collisions. Uh, two cars running into each other, um, uh, two people running into each other, uh, even the golf ball example that I used. Uh, in general, um, because of the way that our world works, there's always some energy loss to um, uh, to um, some sort of uh, uh, heat normally, and that's that's basically what what characterizes an inelastic collision is that the energy part of our equations don't equal. So, um, so whenever we have two things running into each other, it turns out the only thing that we can really write anything about is the momentum. So let's take a specific example. On this one, I'm just going to deal with um, a couple football players. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll look at uh, in particular. Um, why uh, I shouldn't uh, be playing football. Um, so let's say I'm here and I'm going to be running at my full speed uh, at 5 meters per second. And of course my mass is 70 kilograms. And I run to, into an actual football player whose mass is 120 kilograms big football player that's standing still and I'm trying to move this person All right. now unlike um, elastic collisions which we'll talk about later the only thing that's conserved in this case is momentum and so the momentum at the beginning is again equal to the momentum at the end alright um, and one thing we might be interested in of course is how, how fast am I getting this guy going uh, by running into them. Um, perfectly inelastic collisions are a very special case uh, where um, unlike just normal inelastic collisions and perfectly elastic collisions we're going to assume both the, uh, the, the, the objects that are colliding um, have the same speed at the end. Uh, this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good approximation in things like tackling a football. If you think about what happens when uh, let's say I run and tackle somebody is that um, after I run and tackle them, the two of us are kind of smushed together, right? You kind of like um, have a hold of the other person. And we're both moving with the same speed afterwards, V. So I have some initial speed, but then we both have the same speed afterwards. Um, and that's the, this, this aspect right here is the, is the, the perfectly inelastic. Again, it normally it's things that stick together. So you can imagine, let's say, throwing a piece of clay at, at something and it sticks to it and keeps moving. Um, uh, or two cars where they, whenever the one hits the other car, they it smashes so much that that the two basically keep going in the same direction at the same speed afterwards. Um, so there's no, there's no bouncing off. That's a perfectly inelastic collision. Um, so let's see what the consequences of that are. So again, um, we have the pretend, the momentum at the beginning is equal to momentum final. Or at the mo, um, uh, let's put, let's just call me person one, and him person two. Um, uh, so uh, if I'm um, if I'm running, sorry, I didn't realize I'm doing this all in red. Uh, here, let's turn it to black. Um, so if I'm uh, if I uh, have some momentum at the beginning, um, and uh, the 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 um, oh, I said I was going to use one and two, didn't I? Uh, I have some momentum at the beginning, and he has some momentum at the beginning, and then we both have some momentum in the end. Okay, so we're going to use our primes there. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the vector sign because we're only going to deal in one dimension in this case. We're only dealing in the x dimension, so if we call this x. And so if we think about what's happening, um, I'm starting with some mass and some initial velocity. All right. He has some mass and some initial velocity. It turns out his velocity is actually a zero. And then um, we both are going to have some sort of velocity at the end. Now again, the whole inelastic part of it says that my speed at the end is equal to his speed at the end. They're the same. And I'm just going to call that just V prime without the subscript. 
So if we look at that, that changes this equation here where we still have m1 v1. Um, so we still have that part. Um, again, we got rid of the second part because uh, his velocity was zero at the beginning. But then at this end part, we have m1v plus m2v. And you see both m1 and m2 are being multiplied by v, so we can just call that m1 plus m2. We can just factor out that v. And that's equal to m1v1. And that's the thing that's so useful about perfectly elastic collisions is that basically you're allowed to factor, you, you, you're able to do uh, you know, this, this step right here where we just factor out those, those masses um, and have a common final velocity, which put prime on it because it's at the end. So if we go ahead and plug our numbers in, um, uh, well actually let's do one last bit of algebra. If I want to know what our final velocity is going to be, I can actually do this. V prime is equal to m1 v1 divided by m1 plus m2. Now we can plug our numbers in. We get uh, 70 kilograms. Uh, my initial velocity is 5 meters per second. And we get my 70 kilograms plus 120 kilograms. And if we do that all, we get 350 uh, kilogram meters per second divided by um, 190. And um, that's approximately equal to, and people give me a hard time by how terrible I am at these approximately equal to. But I think, I'm pretty sure here, that it's approximately equal to, let's say, 1.8 meters per second at the end. Okay? Um, and that's basically how we do this. Um, so you see that, um, and you see the consequence of this, which is that um, if uh, I'm running at 5 meters per second and I smash into the other guy, we're only going 1.8 meters per second at, at the end. Um, so I really haven't um, haven't done uh, that much to him. I've sped him up 1.8 meters per second from zero. Uh, but if you look at me, uh, I went from five meters per second to 1.8 meters per second. I've slowed myself down 3.2 meters per second. So it, the the hit actually hurts me much more than it hurts him, uh, which is common in these these types of inelastic collisions. Basically, depends entirely upon your mass, um, which is why football players are so large. Um, that's a quick introduction to how uh, um, inelastic and in particular perfectly inelastic collisions work. Again, perfectly inelastic being when the things actually stick together. Uh, we'll do another example in class and see how we, uh, how we fare with those and get an idea of how, um, how these collisions work. I hope that was helpful and have a wonderful uh, evening.